Clinical Depression, every last Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on C. Hi, good evening. Um, Sarah Chiu, this is um, about uh, basket starfish, our language core. Uh, once again, you see that uh, the shape of the basket starfish because I think we are all one and just sharing one core and all our languages are the uh, remnants of the same language. And this is what it is like. And I think the language family tree business should be changed because it brings in a lot of human hierarchy. And uh, I also believe that women make up half of the human population. It's impossible that we didn't leave any of our expression, you know, in the world of language. So here we are. Um, good evening. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, this week, as I said last week, I am going to talk a little bit about um, building. Uh, as we human being uh, starts to, uh, we. Uh, raise ourselves up from the ground we slowly begin to build our city our town our uh, country so you will see it slowly going on bit by bit building really from the foundation and i'm going to start this um slideshow right here okay again i will repeat the um the all the things that i say every single week and then uh is a jot you your accepted thinking that we shared a common verbal language long before writing began and then the evidence is the use of a uh, lot of same sounds to express similar meanings across different uh, language families regardless of time and distance and then there are too much attention paid to the grammatical differences and uh, if you pay attention to what i'm showing you you will know that the early alphabetic system were also kind of ideographic and uh, I'm showing you the East and West integrated view uh, because I believe that we will see anything better with an integrated view. And I use my ability of the pictograph to help you read all those ancient pictograph. And um, I do not follow purely the Western standard in the modern classroom setting. I will use a lot of my travel experience to back up all my research. And you will see that um, I started from the left letter A, uh, the bullhorn shape, as you can see, and uh, you will also uh, notice that a lot of the uh, sound will uh, include all, a lot of the vowel sound, A-E-I-O-U, which is the living sound itself, and also the k k k sound, okay? And uh, of course, in writing, it's represented by the K and the G. And then uh, uh, you have to prepare that the etymology is very uh, confused, you know, and is uh, interlacing uh, notes. So uh, be prepared to go from country to country. And uh, last week I showed you briefly this uh, map that I showed from the very center, how this little grass actually grow into uh, the concept of the essence itself. And then uh, from the grass, we started to, to, to weave into mats and also baskets and and the idea of a basket as a, what you sit on is your home your country and then we start also building and then the other way goes to uh, is also really from the uh, idea of this little uh, soul itself it goes into a lot of different letter the main principle is the letter a and also it goes to the other world of how the cosmic movement is but today I'm go not going to uh, I don't have time anyway I am not going to concentrate on others but one little part of that big map okay and I will retain this uh, linear B car sound right there because the car you can look at it understand it as the cardiac the heart and center or the core and um, exactly as the human language share one sim si uh, one single core okay and this is a Sumerian early pictograph the grass to read and as time went by they they started to put this little bullhorn right there and uh, you can understand it uh, as a kernel and the kernel is still start with the k, k, k sound okay and then 
and then when it turns into a uh, cuneiform it like this it holds the sound of the the g or the gi uh, however you pronounce it it means the essence and the gist you know of uh, anything um, of course you know because the, the like this you know the grass you know the girl sound in the grass also originated from that little grass itself and i am uh, t this week i am showing you the exoteric point of view because all the others are the very spiritual world of the ancient people so um let's pay a little bit of attention to the grass and what i show you here is actually guy the chinese uh, pronunciation of all those uh, weed and grasses okay look at the similarity between this one the uh, sumerian pictograph and the chinese word right there the guy okay and then it really comes to uh, as people started learning they started to use this symbol right there which means read it also the essence and in the turning form it starts to have the uh, pronunciation of kilim or kilim to mean uh, the turning movement and also the rope as you can see you know people really started uh, their first technology and then um, the consonant the sound carries on and when we begin to weave it, them into a four floor mat it uh, still maintain the sound kit in Sumerian of course if you speak um, uh, Indian languages kata is the mat itself and kata in or kato in Greek is anything underneath you okay and then um, it uh, in English it, of course you know the sound state in the word uh, carpet and then in the other way this is the uh, chinese writing right there the k and the k is the basket itself and then of course the cat part of the basket actually is made of the bass and the cat sound okay the basket um this is the hieroglyph k which is a basket and uh, the basket uh, the weave itself is what you put underneath you and then as we still uh, slowly elevate ourselves we will begin to see the footstool coming in this is a chinese writing still maintain the gay and case uh, and that, uh, because we cannot just invent sound without a reason if you uh, are really living in this uh, human world every sound you follow you know you have to adopt from the last technology that you had so uh, ev uh, from the basket to this little stool we still maintain the gay and the k sound okay it means the footstool and also gradually means the foundation and interestingly um, the hieroglyph also maintain the g like this can you see the similarity they are both the base and the footstool itself and then um, if you look at the uh, view of the ancient egyptian um, their goddesses sit on two baskets like that and it's a rim itself um, and the human rim and the and the heaven the rim of heaven and it means the dwelling space and this is akkadian right there it still maintains the k and the key sound can you see that little uh, loop right there it's still like a remnant of this little handle right there and then uh, if you speak uh, Hindi uh, loka is the word for a place which become the English word location okay the ker sound right there is what it is and then also the country also developed from this idea of where you are sitting on okay if you come to the uh, the other side this is the Chinese as I said from this little basket right there it actually developed into a whole lot of the foundation word and I I'm going to talk about this part right today okay and you will see that um the idea of having the basket of uh filled well, fill with clay and then it turned into uh, the idea of a work and also because of the building of adobe wall and adobe houses and then uh, it actually gets to the uh, idea of the building then the, the nation is where you sit on okay and um,
Okay, um, before I begin uh, to tell you the building itself, I want to show you how a little bit of detail tells me a lot about uh, how people live. Uh, this is a picture I took in the desert of Yemen, and this is some Bedouin tribe out there. You see it's the ground right there. Uh, when they need to cook, they do need a little mat, you know, to shield them from the sand and the dirt on the floor. So can you see this little uh, handle right there? And um, from for thousands of years the tradition carry on uh, because the, as you can see the Egyptian hieroglyph still shows this handle and also the linear B which is the proto-Greek also shows that little handle this handle is very important it shows that the people is really living uh, on the ground uh, the living space is definitely close to the ground so in order to keep the mat clean they do have to hang it up so the handle is very very important important and the other thing is that it also shows the people are living in a normal state because they have to move from place to place um, no one is going to carry this by hand and it will be very reasonable for them to have a handle and hang it along any of the things that they are moving along okay so it's very important we pay attention to these things instead of sitting in the classroom okay and okay and uh, I will show you the first necessity and then which become the first technology. As I said, the mat itself is very important. The first show of this program, I show you some pictures I took in the desert. I show you how hot and hot cold the ground is. So without a floor mat, there is no way that a man can sit down to perfect a stone tool. Okay, so this mat is very important. And the Cadian uh, already used this uh, basket-like uh, thing to show a, a, a location you know a country a county okay and of course you know from the human observation of how the bird lives the basket and the bird nest is, is a very similar concept the ancient egyptian used this to mean the foreigners you know this is a foreigner sitting on their foreign nation as uh, represented by the basket so they have this k which also become your word country okay and then um there are different forms of basket and then the Chinese writing is exactly the gay and the K. Um, the linear B, as I said, this is the key syllable. And this is also the linear A and the B. They have a car sound. This actually is a very versatile symbol. You can look at it in a million different way. But you can see that this is a whole thing that you can treat it as the same. Why are they across different cultures, across long distance and different uh, differences in time? Why are they all using the same ob object to share the same sound if they didn't share a very original uh, same language? At the beginning so uh, the Greek actually um, adopted you know the linear A and B sound and then they have the words like Kalathi as a basket and Koskino as the uh, sif itself so you can see the Kako still uh, is uh, very prominent right there the Sanskrit have the Kandila as the basket and even in English you have the word cane right there cane is uh, the raw material of course you know to weave all these things and um, if you weave the basket very big, they become a vessel itself. They, instead of a uh, stationary thing, it become actually a moving vessel. And of course, you begin to call it coracle, right, in English. And then um, the uh, in the Persian, they have used this kind of big, huge basket as a boat uh, on the on the on the uh, Euphrates and Tigris River for centuries and centuries. Uh, transcribed by the foreigners, they are called Gufa or Kufa, however you spell it. But the sound, as I said, is also good or cur, okay? And um, these are basically uh, floating baskets. So if you look at the English, the word from the carpet for started from the ground, from the colander, which is a basket or sieve, and then a can, a case, a casket, a basket, a coffer, and until it actually start to flow on the water, the canoe and the kayak, there is not nothing uh, simply uh, derived from the uh, uh, American Indian. It shows that even the American Indians were following the same ancient ancient verbal language that existed and marking the code of human language okay 
and um, a jaw to accept the thinking. The knowledge of making ropes, threads, and braids, and mats were definitely was simultaneous with the development of stone too. Now, uh, from the Western point of view, the Stone Age, you know, is always like a very macho development of human uh, being. Uh, but uh, I can assure you that a very mute and soft feminine workforce definitely was behind the formation of the early language because without all these ropes and threads and mats no man can sit down to perfect the stone too and ironically you will notice that m not many words on chipping stones remained but there were actually tons of words remaining showing uh, how to make ropes the circular motion of trailing threads and braids like that so you can see that you know a lot of the feminine thing is actually hidden underneath that spoken language and talking about the base itself I want to show you uh, last week I showed you the word Gaya Gaya in uh, Indian uh, language in Sanskrit it actually means the base but this boat Gaya is a very important Indian city this is where the uh, they said the uh, the Buddha attained uh, enlightenment this is the base of the Buddha where he where he attained enlightenment so you will see that you know this is a very abstract showing of the base of the, uh, the the Buddha but why is it that it's made into a bowl shape like that isn't it easier to just make it a small uh, block a square block like that why are they making it like that and then I show you you know far away this is actually from my city this is from Hong Kong uh, we have a huge huge Buddha made can you see that this is also in a bowl shape like that of course you know for the Eastern people we understand it is the lotus that uh, the Buddha sits in the rim of the Buddha right and um, but if you look back you know it actually follow a very very ancient tradition the uh, Egyptians you know believe that their gods this is got their goddesses actually sit on the heaven rim is actually also a bow shape and then um, the Akkadian again they have this K and K and then the Egyptian have this writing K and the Chinese have this K and and even though you see the Indian is very abstract, the, the Buddha is shown a bit in a very abstract way. But why is it that in China, in the whole of China, in Hong Kong, uh, Buddhism becomes so figuratively? And if you read a lot of the art history, you will only see the Western point of view, very Eurocentric. Uh, they will tell you everything on, uh, as if everything starts from the Greek culture. They will see, tell you that the Greek uh, love of statue actually spread through the Afghanistan and also uh, Pakistan through India and then into China that's why China adopted all this statue but uh, why is it can you explain to me why actually the Buddha becomes so abstract in India itself if we have to if this uh, the statue has to pass through India to come to China why there is a big difference so definitely this Eurocentric view doesn't work very well and I can show you something that actually comes from internal uh, need of each single culture uh, because you know if you look at uh, India the Hinduism has a, has a very deep root in that long before uh, Buddhism there is the national uh, religion of Hinduism Hinduism pay, pays a lot of attention in the different uh, forms of statues and gods and then but the on the contrast you know the in, in China the very very ancient religion is actually Taoism. Taoism didn't start it as a religion. Taoism is actually a very very abstract concept, a philosophy. So um, the Taoism uh, didn't actually help the rulers to rule China because if you read a little bit more about Taoism, it actually has no border, it doesn't reveal any human form or nothing about that. So it actually, um, uh, the, the new uh, figure form actually helps a ruler to uh, to rule China easier so and actually if you pay attention 
you will see that the two countries from India to China, it actually comes from the internal thirst for changes. Uh, this is something intrinsic. Nothing comes from outside. It is not like what they tell you that from the Greek influence or from that. It is from an intrinsic need for changes. As we human always go to one extreme and then we make a circle back to another extreme. It's always like this. This is something internal. And then uh, uh, something very interesting also you know uh, a lot of the ancient uh, religion will pay a lot of attention in the head uh, but then um, all of a sudden the India started to put the feet as a very interesting important uh, a symbol of worship and as you can see the head and the feet constantly uh, flipping backward and forward this is a very very human uh, normal psychology that uh, we, it doesn't come from the outside okay so I show you quickly um, the normative versus the settlement how why we begin to build right uh, so at the beginning a lot of the uh, uh, the building material were just reeds and, 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 and very light material and we started to fence ourselves in and then the house itself still maintained the early grass uh, word for car and the girl and there is a little mutation sound from Jia okay and then the Chinese have also that from the basket the light material have this girl, girl sound and then when we begin to uh, have this uh, house like thing we begin to call it girl still following the same sound but you see the same kind of mutation like the Sumeri itself uh, the uh, Mandarin actually say Jia right there and then it also means home and family and then the uh, Mongolian uh, the, they have the ge as the as the home and the tent and if I show you this big picture uh, if you uh, if you take away all the skin they cover the leather they cover the top it's actually a big basket you can easily move from place to place this is the life of a nomad so um, uh, there is a Chinese writing It's actually like a hand moving a basket it means migration and the moving your home and then um, there is another word also move from place to place and also migrate these are two similar words this is specifically to move your house this is actually moving with your animal so you can see there's a long history, history of human migration with their animals and then um, the Sumerian begin to have a, a key sound right there to means the foundation and the base you can see all this line right there you will understand when I show you the Chinese sound the Chinese use this basket but you can see a very little sign right there to means the basket and gradually it means the gay and and then uh, the Mandarin mutation will also become the Qi it means the foundation and the base and uh, what is that this is actually a earth rammer you can see that they start pounding the earth to make the the, the, the foundation that's why you start to see even um, in writing itself it, you see all this repeated line right there even in Sumerian this is the pounding itself the Adobe that that we begin to build and then uh, you can see the sound still follows and then the Chinese sound still follow we can never never in uh, invent new words we can only follow old sounds okay and um, then I uh, will show you who starts to lead uh, people to build and of course the architect is the first one the arc itself from the Greek word that means the first the first one who leads the technology of course is the king and the guy to guide the whole group of people the tribe okay and there is a very early the king of Lagash uh, the, from 2500 BC you will see that uh, they're very symbolic they are carrying the basket to show people they uh, symbolically ritually to begin to build a big big project as I said the Sumerian has this sign the Kisau it means the foundation and the courtyard of course you have to pound the courtyard for people to to stay there to have meeting and things like that even I born in Hong Kong in the 70s and in, in the 60s 70s and then I remember when I, I was a child, whenever, whenever there is a meeting place, it will be a pounded ground, you know, long before we move into tall buildings. Whenever you see a pounded ground, there's a meeting place. And then uh, go back to this, you will see the Chinese. This is the uh, uh, 
when you add this earth grammar it will begin to uh, to mean the foundation the base and interestingly this is actually a chinese word can you see this can you see this it actually is closely connected to difficulty of work and it actually means the clay itself what are these people carrying but the clay to start building okay and you see the sound is also very similar and then um, we begin to see the building you can see if you go to places you will start to see people moving clay in that way to start building and hieroglyph this is a card sound to work and then uh, a lot of the activity word like karma still carry on the car sound if you speak persian kadan is the word to mean work also and then as i said this is the chinese writing and then uh, this word gan itself it means a very difficult you will see that when they start building monument itself of course it become a difficult life and then the sumerian have this uh, say uh, gun and then the chinese actually have a very similar writing we say gong actually to means to work and to labor and then uh, as time went by the sumerian have uh, turned this sign like that and then it means a shine or some kind of uh, 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 establishment and then they have this dub word right there the chinese has a dub sound and then uh, verbally we have this dub dum dum uh, we actually changes the sound it actually means with the hand when you're hammering something okay and then the sumerian also have the tap you can see the two line right there it means to flatten something to hammer and flatten something and then uh the, they turn back to the feet and then when you keep stamping the feet it means the foundation and then the chinese also exactly have the same sound tap and dumb it actually means repeatedly stamping your feet and i show you a picture i took in america here and then can you see the real work there even if i give you a bunch of english word this tap stamp stem repeatedly that's when you make the abodobi soil okay so you can see that they are all all similar okay i think time is um running out and i'm going to stop here right now uh, i hope you can understand how what i'm going to show you yes sorry i will call and um time is running up now uh, i'm going to uh finish it right now because um at tomorrow i mean next week i'm going to continue this to show you uh how uh we all build in the same way using the same co uh, consonant and using the same pictograph to show it and even now in english you carried it on thanks